earners. And uh, my co-presenter, Laura, and I are genuinely thrilled uh, to have you with us today. Um, before I forget, I might as well go after a lot of the questions I've seen. Now I've been doing these for about 10 years. And so uh, some of the top questions that we get in the chat, uh, why don't I jump on them right now? First and foremost, uh, the webinar will be archived. And I've got my fantastic colleague uh, from the Greater Great Lakes, Amelia, um, who's going to be popping in the chat uh, soon and throughout where you can find this webinar. And of course, if you just Google CoA Webinars Archived, you'll uh, get to it. So for any reason, you have a colleague who wasn't able to join and you think could benefit, you just direct them to that website. And in a couple of days, our friends at CoA, by the way, huge shout out to uh, the wonderful folks, Sharon, Bonnie, uh, uh, Michelle, James, everybody, Bethel, Mariah, I'm forgetting about 500 people in the board. Thank you so much for all that you do for adult education. Uh, the next thing, the webinar, the post, the PowerPoint that we're going to be using today is also going to be uh, posted. And uh, I want to thank uh, uh, so many of you. This is great contribution from our friends at CASAS, my colleagues at Burlington. And I've got tons of um, uh, many folks who you've been wonderful uh uh, practice folks to go over this PowerPoint. So I think you're going to have a lot of good information coming from it that you can use in your daily life. And by the way, that's our that's our begin with the end in mind. We want to provide you just enough information to get you excited to, to dig a little then deeper. And we've got exactly where you can dig a little deeper. So please, please, please just know that full contact information for myself, for Laura, for Burlington, for uh, our friends at Casas, all going to be um, uh, listed in the PowerPoint uh, towards the end. And then lastly, I need you to do me a favor. Okay, if you, you happen to be, and you can be straight, you can be honest, if you happen to be in a good mood today, and not everybody's in a great mood, but if you happen to be in a good mood today, would you put that in the chat? If you happen to be in a good mood, you know, this was just a, a really good Monday. Let me see who's in the chat who just happens to be in a good mood. All right, fantastic, great. Not a good mood, Robert, a great mood. Okay, so I need you to help me out for this last one. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is called Building Anticipation. You get extra credit for audience participation. So do me a favor. Would you do me a favor? Just get your hands ready for the keyboard. Rub your hands together just for a second, even if you're in San Diego. Even if you're in San Diego, rub your hands together. It's true, this is research-based. I'm a notary, okay? Okay, see, now you are extra ready for the audience participation part of the show, okay? All right, so without further ado, have you heard? Have you heard? I have heard. Have what? you heard? What have you heard? Laura is about to give you some information, some critical information. What do you think she's gonna be talking about today? Let's let's do some higher order thinking skills. Let's do some predictive. In the chat, what do you think? Whoa, look at this. Ooh. Oh steps, my. Steps, Casa, steps, Casa. We have the advanced class today. That's right. That's right. Today we're talking about the new assessment for English language learners. The acronym is STEPS. It stands for Student Test for English Progress and Success. And we're very happy and proud because we've gotten a seven-year approval from Octave. And we're also very happy and proud because you can access this on uh, e-tests, so virtually, or we still provide the paper pencil booklets, which is why we have these beautiful colored booklets. You'll notice for the experienced veterans of CASAS, we've added purple and a level five booklet as well. We'll talk about our new design a little bit later. And what might be a benefit if I'm using e-tests over the booklets, Laura? Well, your students can get their re results right away. And as we know, that's really important for students to get those results as soon as possible. Um, you can, it auto corrects for you quickly. You don't have to do any data entry. You don't have to scan or bubble any forms. It's very user-friendly. 
And I see Lee in the chat has a great answer. So while uh, the federal government approved steps uh, quite a few months ago, it's up to each state to indicate when you can start using steps. So Lee in the chat, that is perfect. You have to check with your state office to find mm -hmm. out uh, that even though it's federally approved, and isn't it nice through 2030, federally approved for both reading and listening, uh, you want to check and get that confirmation from your state office as far as when you can use it. Yeah. yeah. And I'll also mention, Robert, my colleague, Christine Maines, is also assisting us today. So any questions that may come up about CASAS, Christine will go ahead and provide some more detailed response and links in the chat. So thanks, Christine. Yes. And thank you to my colleague, Amelia. And uh, uh, Amelia in Latin means knows all, sees all. And so therefore, I'm, I, we're doubly blessed to have both of our, our colleagues today in the chat. So uh, I'm a firm believer. Uh, anybody familiar with seven habits of highly effective people? Anybody? Yeah. Seven habits of highly effective people. Anybody out there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And wow. there, there was something about beginning about beginning. One of those seven habits was beginning. How did it wind up? Anybody know that? Begin with the end in mind. So I think versus just hitting you with a bunch of nitty gritty about what, you know, the test itself, why don't we begin in, with it, with the end in mind and say, why, why is, is something new happened? And um, well, first, first off, Who's working in a different work environment than you were three or four years ago? Is anybody in the chat working in a different environment, you know, uh, than you were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did uh, technology help that? Did technology help that? Did the, so the workplace, so your workplace is changing. And so that's one of the biggest reasons the workplace changed. And so here is just one of dozens and dozens and dozens of reports out there about how the America's and the world's workplace is changing. This one's a case for reskilling and upskilling America's middle skill workers. But really, the authors of this study also talked about how just about any job, whether it's an entry level job or beyond. So why is CASAS changing? Because the workforce is changing. And this was a webinar about a year ago that really jumped out at me that said that this research study uh, by ETS Center for Research on Human Capital and Education uh, said that technology and automation, how many of you, was there anybody who hadn't heard of Zoom five years ago or didn't have a webcam five years ago? Is there anybody in the in the chat at all that didn't have you know or seven years ago or wasn't using it on a weekly basis wasn't use, using it on a weekly basis yes yes and now look at it right so technology and automation are changing the way we work and this explains why our the education whether you're adult ESL ABE high set GD preparation whatever you do such critical thinking skills and problem solving are just flat out, you know, they're they're just almost mandatory to meet the level of cognitive demand in middle school skilled jobs. And like I said, these authors later said, you know, even in even in beginning uh, entry level jobs. So why did why had costs changing? The work and Burlington we we changed a few years ago. The the workplace is changing. Increased demand for digital literacy and skills. Here's another one. The law of the land changed. Here's another reason. I'm going to give you a little hint. What changed dramatically in adult education? And I'm giving you just a little bit of a teaser. Ten years ago, something happened at this level that affected adult education. It, it took us by storm. There you go. There you go. Yes, you got it, friends. W-I-O-A. Uh, we have some really advanced folks here in the chat. My gosh, they're answering all of your questions. I, so I miss the advanced group. Okay, but but do me a favor. Do me a favor. Now, this I'm 
a notary, so this is doctor patient, you know, confidentiality. On a scale of one to five, one being a little, five being you're a black belt, how would you rate your knowledge if you had to explain to the legislature what Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act was? In the chat, let's see how many folks. All right, yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four. Perfect. Okay. One being a little, five being a lot. You're you're on the right flight. You're on the right flight. This is yeah. it. I think the thing that some people that you forget, especially when you're a teacher in the classroom, is you don't think about yourself as part of the workforce development system. And the WIOA legislation really calls out adult education because WIOA has four titles and Title II is adult education. So really all adult educators should think of themselves as part of that workforce development system. And if anybody was in K through 12 about 15 years ago or more, when No Child Left Behind, does anybody remember No Child Left Behind? Um, yeah. And the way No Child Left Behind changed what we teach and how we teach it and how it was measured. Well, kind of, sort of, and we deal with a lot of generalities in these webinars. This is kind of a stretch. This is like our version of No Child Left Behind, if you will, as far as the impact that it had. So one of the biggest impacts that it had was that you no longer had to just go through this course, finish it, go to another course, finish it. You could be doing things at the same time, concurrent. So there were some initials that we owe brought to us that most of us hadn't heard before as far as the fact that our students could be doing two things at one time. Does anybody want to take a guess? at the three initials that we owe a brought. Yeah, all right, Carolyn, yay. Man, this is the advanced class. So yes, I- I think we should have added more rigor to our presentation, Robert. I, I, I think we <laughs> maxed out. I think we just maxed <laughs> out. So this picture minus the mass, this was me in 1990, okay? And minus the screen and everything, it was a chalkboard. So educate. this is the integration of education. And this is what IET, of course, is. Education. This is me back in the 90s. Now, IET says that I've got, as a teacher, as a ESL teacher, GED, high set, ABE teacher, I've got to be teaching workforce preparation. I've got to be teaching how to get jobs, keep jobs to my students, the soft skills needed. But I've in typically in most states, the perfect world is is that I'm also team teaching with a, uh, a teacher who's a, a trades teacher, a teacher's mm -hmm. a industry recognized certificate. Mm -hmm. So WIOA says that you didn't have to just wait to finish ABE, GED, ESL, high set, and then go on a job training. You could do it at the same time with two teachers who are coming up with a single mm -hmm. set of learning objectives. Mm -hmm. So think about this. This was me years ago when I was doing a lot of great conversational English, right, in the classroom in Immokalee, Florida. But now with IET, I've got to be thinking about how am I preparing my students to do well in a job career training course, right, using textbooks mm -hmm. and having to pass an industry-recognized state assessment or national assessment, mm -hmm. right? So this yeah. is a lot, a lot of change. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask people to put in the chat, Robert, how, because this is kind of a change management issue. It's, um, it's hard to change the way that you think about delivering programs when, like you said, you thought, oh, your ESL student's going to be in ESL for six years, and then they're going to be in ABE for six years, and then they're going to get some training. Well, that's 12 years too long for ESL learners to wait, right? We need to get them trained because we're, you know, training the skilled labor, uh, the middle skilled labor for the workforce. It's really, they're depending on us. The federal government's depending on us. Our economy is depending on us to train these folks. So we needed them to get trained faster. So I would just say in the Robert, Robert, in the chat, can people put on a scale of one to five, how are you doing managing this change from that old model to this new model of IET. Okay. Okay, good. Gotcha. Wow. One being a little, five being a lot. And remember, remember on the left here, 
I've that's that was a great ESL class I was teaching, but now once again I've got to get ready. And by the way, that trades teacher, that certificated area teacher teaching culinary arts, in most states that person only has like six years in the field necessary to teach that class. They're not a traditionally trained teacher. They're most likely not going to take into consideration that I that English is my new language, right? And the kind of strategies. So think about what this is doing and thus why CASAS had to come up with a new assessment and Burlington, you know, responded as well. Right. Then, there, then there's another one. Here's another thing in this WIOA. This has its, there's another set of initials. And you, in most states, you have to write separately for this grant. It's another set of initials. And it has its, oh, yeah, oh man, yes. It is section 243. And this is one of the early, it was one of the misinterpreted, most different, differently interpreted uh, initiatives. But this also came from uh, WIOA back in 2014. And there's tons of separate money for this right here. This says that I'm going to have an ESO class where, as you can see, I've highlighted that I'm teaching career preparation, get a job, keep a job. But I'm also doing civics. And this isn't just who, now that we don't have a speaker of the house, heaven forbid, who's next in line, you know, right? Uh, so not just rote memory, but really the rights and responsibilities of living in a new country. And originally, IELCE was interpreted that you also had to have a career training component. But now most states, not all, but most states say, you know what, as long as you've got ESL with workforce preparation, along with civics, and as long as you are giving those students access to job training and leading them toward that goal, then you're in good form using the IELCE uh, monies. So as you can see, the workplace has changed. The, uh, the, the rules and the regs and the funding of adult education has changed. OK, so now how has this changed adult ESL assessment and instruction, particularly since I started doing my teaching uh, back back in the 90s? What kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's some good answers. Boy, boy John, you're definitely getting some extra credit somehow. Yes. Yes. Amelia. OK, so I, I did want you to know I recently lost my um my trophy uh i i was for many years running many of you know i'm in the florida adult and community educators hall of fame and um but i recently lost a trophy and that trophy was i was the undisputed analogy king of adult education similes metaphors i don't even know what those differences are i was <laughs> the king i have been dethroned by laura fetter that's okay. right. I'm now the queen. She is now the champion of the analogies. One of the reasons I love analogies so much is when this webinar is over and you're trying to think of some anchors to help you on what to do next, the, these this is time tested. So this, so I have a question for you because I'm also a, a history major too. What in the chat? What was America's first mass-produced America, America health food? What was our first mass-produced health food in the United States about 100 years ago? Oh, 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 came from Michigan. Wow. That's right. If oh, they got here on man. time, they, they got a little bit of a, a little teaser at the beginning. That's it. Yes. Yes, Kellogg's cereal. Shout out to our friends in Battle Creek. Now, you might you might chuckle, but you know, actually, America was really suffering on vitamin deficiencies, on uh, not having enough to eat back then. Of I mean, believe it or not, uh, you can Google it, but this came up with Dr. Kellogg, and there were sanatoriums, health food. So this was really good. This was really good health food, believe it or not, for its time. 
So the analogy I make is when I was teaching adult ESL, I was doing pretty good. I was teaching really good conversational English, doing some language arts and vocabulary. But now I've got to be thinking, how am I getting my students ready for ABE, G, you know, GED, high set? How am I getting them ready to take trades classes, certificated area classes, right? So I've got to up my game. So this is really, really good, what I was doing in the past. So in the chat, can you put, how can I make this breakfast? My doctor said, Robert, you got to make your cornflakes even healthier. You got to take it to a, raise the bar. What could I do? So in the chat, can you give me some suggestions? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's okay. Fruits. Anybody got anything different than, than fruits? That's right. By the way, Dr. Kellogg didn't want you to put milk at first. That's right. Yeah. Nuts. Okay. Protein, seeds. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So when we get into the standards, and so this is going to help you, particularly if you support teachers, I think this is a nice analogy to help your teachers understand they're doing a great job, mm -hmm. but you're right. I need some, some Michigan, look at that, look at, look at Gwen. I need some Michigan blueberries, not just any blueberries, Michigan blueberries. I need some blueberries. I need some flax seeds, right? I need some wheat germ. Mm -hmm. So I, I know it sounds like we're having a lot of fun right here. But this really is something that I believe when this webinar is over, mm -hmm. you know, we'll yeah. stick with yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And let me just add, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, folks who have started using the STEPS assessment and it is more rigorous and teachers are noticing this, students are noticing this. So this is why Robert and I are taking the time to really set the table about the why it's more rigorous. It didn't just become rigorous for no reason. And also some communication tools for you when you're talking to your teachers, because the new uh, STEPS assessment is aligned with the ELP standards. And so teachers may feel nervous about, oh my gosh, I don't feel confident in teaching those standards. So we're just saying, we're instead of like thinking, oh, I've got to change the way I teach, or this is going to require lots of training, we're just saying it's like a bowl of cereal. We're just going to add some blueberries and flax. We're going to make it just a little. You're going to change your teaching just a little bit, make it a little healthier. So hopefully that will help. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So here's one more question for you. So just like there's nutritional guidelines that, that you know, hopefully point us in the right direction. What are, here's a question for your chat box. What are the national standards that guide uh, adult ESL programming? What are the national standards? All right. Yay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. The English language proficiency standards. So when the federal government, when OCTE, the Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education, which oversees adult all of us in adult education nationwide, um, that when when they adopted standards, they commissioned the English language proficiency standards from our friends at American Institutes of Research. And by the way, if you have access to Burlington English, we have all this, by the way, in the course and lesson planner. So if you want to take and also something interesting, I was used to from the 90s, I would look in standards and it would say how to read a map. Students will be able to decipher a coupon. And it's a really mind blowing if you're used to that and you look at the ELPSs, and again, you, you can find them on the web. You can find them in Burlington English. So if I had to just in a nutshell, if I only had an elevator speech, right, I was only with somebody for a few minutes to explain to them, I, I, I this would be a, a helpful thing, web's depth of knowledge, okay? Uh, how many of you, from a scale to one to five, one being a little, five being a lot, how would you rate yourself on knowledge of Webb's depth of knowledge? And it, all answers are good. Yeah, one. Yeah, I go back to Bloom's taxonomy, which is, yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is a great thing to know, right? And so let's just imagine that our, our Webb's depth of knowledge one, 
that was those were my cornflakes. OK, and it is a bit of a stretch, but, you know, work with me here. You know, this was this was our our cornflakes. And then, you know, then I added some wheat germ, you know, so it's I'm not just asking you who, what, where, but I'm asking you why did one thing come after another? Right. So apply knowledge and basic skill reasoning. Web's depth of knowledge three, strategic thinking. What are the, you know, wh why does it solve the problem? What are the uh, in, intended and un, unintended, unexpected outcomes? Okay. So while you're teaching, be thinking, can you take your lesson from just standard journalism questions and add some, some flavor to it and add some deeper thinking and reflection here? Okay. So this is an extensive thinking Things like what if, okay? How could you take that? All right, fantastic. Okay, so by the way, once again, just to let you know, we've got you covered. So if you're using Burlington English, we've had this in because when we built our courses, we were lucky enough, gosh, starting back in 2017 and then released core in 2019 that, that we were all set to go. So yeah, as well as the college and career readiness standards, CASA's competencies. So here comes the hot stepper. Anybody know that song? Anybody know that song? Boy, we're Nobody really knows that song. Yes. Nobody. Oh, come on. Yes. 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 And if you know who the artist was, oh, come on. It's a great one. So here comes the hot stepper. And the, yes, yes. That's pretty. Wow. That's pretty good. So here to talk about steps. So we, we've talked about why the workforce is changing federal government octaves made us change the English language proficiency standards. And that's what CASAS had to aim at. And now to give you some anchors to help you understand the change, I'm going to turn it over to Laura. Okay, great. So just as we were talking about that serial, right, we have our steps content categories for reading. So we would start with some vocabulary, sprinkle in some details, and maybe pour on a little, keep going, yep. main idea. Is it going to get a little bit more challenging? It's going to get more challenging, I think. I yeah. love this stuff. And then we'll add some inference. And finally, point of view and supporting evidence. So these are the content categories for reading steps. Gotcha. And now for and listening. Then, for listening steps, we'll start with some vocabulary. Then we're going to add some details. Main idea again. Summary. And then dialogue, because we know producing dialogue is much more difficult, right, to produce, to be able to put those pieces together in a dialogue. So those are the listening steps content categories. And by the way, uh, you know, if you want a deeper dive, like I said, talk about this, our, our friends at CASAS have some great sample questions, mm -hmm. that, you know, on the web for both reading and listening that mm -hmm. out particularly, you know, how vocabulary factors in and details and main ideas. But I think the, particularly the summary and, and dialogue really, I mean, it really helps us, gives us some North stars as teachers about when I'm teaching you know, I don't teach to the test, but I teach with a test in mind, right? And so, because particularly with the kind of tests we use in adult education, uh, you know, criterion reference tests versus norm reference tests, they're, they're really, the thought is, is that I, I'm being assessed on things that I really encountered in the classroom, right? So that's why I love that from years ago when I heard, I don't teach the test, but I do teach with the test in mind, because the test is going to be reflective of what I was teaching in class. Yeah. And so thank you, Christine and everybody in the, for putting blueprints, but, yeah. but other things are still important, huh? That's right. We still have the content areas. So like basic communication, consumer economics, community resources, health, employment. These are just some examples. And also for folks who like to see a visual representation on the left, uh, you're looking at the level C uh, blueprint. So we have a blueprint for each of our levels that'll break it down for you. To, so percentage wise, you know what content areas are included in each of those, um, the reading steps or the listening. 
And just to take a look at what we've been familiar with for quite some time. So your current life and work, um, now definitely it had some higher order thinking and what have you, but but understand when um when when Casas was putting together the what what Octe was telling assessment folks to aim at was different. And so now that we've got the ELPSs, instead of, as you can see, where I this is a lot more of I read the passage and it's it's a, the focus will be on self-image, fitness and food. I'm reading the last sentence. Participants will identify healthy meals, develop exercise plans, examine lifestyle choices. You know, so it's a lot more straightforward in my my answers. So not for all of them, but for many you know, I'm going to be functioning at a little bit lower level, doing a lot more matching. So for those of you who are interested in what um, uh, the new uh, CASA steps looks like, by the way, is anybody using for your adult basic education or GED or high set, is anybody using the CASA's goals? So steps would be for your ESL uh, adults and then goals. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's great. So I think it can't be uh, understated uh, that it's a nice pipeline of that. The fact that today's ESL learner could be tomorrow's ABE GD high set learner. And therefore, um, and therefore uh, so much of what steps is the new steps is going to look like uh it looks like is is going to mirror a lot of what goals is um so look at this one this is one of my favorite so use it or lose it uh is an expression we often uh say when we talk about physical skills or activities that require us to use our muscles so this isn't coming right out and saying if you sit on the couch your muscles will atrophy. You've got to, you've got to be thinking a, a little, at a little higher level. What does and also keep in mind English is your new language. You might not be used to a lot of the phraseology and what have you. So therefore, this is asking, you, you know, this is drawing, you know, a parallel to muscles and not using your muscles, use it, lose it to cognitive ability, right? So we're we're getting into really asking, you know, learners uh, a lot more. But check this out. Look how the answers are even structured. Um, yeah. So look look at these. And by the way, like I say, you're going to get this PowerPoint, so you can definitely expand and 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 take a bigger look at things, you know, on with more time. So look at some of this terminology where it's asking you is one sentence more accurate than an, than another or more important or definitely causation. So when we talk about Webb's depth of knowledge, so in the end, a lot of this is saying, hey, to keep your brain sharp, you need to be doing the following. So why is that recommendation of you need to be doing the following? To keep your brain sharp because of the you know the um the challenge that it's solving in fact if you go to the next one uh why does it solve the problem of atrophy and whatever so there's a lot of deep thinking going on and then what what's the relationship you know so i, I think of this as not just a, an assessment question but this is really inspiring me when i go into the classroom how to take a lesson to the next level. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Um, yeah. I know that Christine is doing a great job of sharing links in the chat. So there are questions like more detailed questions and um, you can get all of that information on our CASAS website. So just great job, Christine, keep it up. Yeah. And by the way, the uh, uh, teaser alert, teaser alert that CASAS if you're really good, okay, if you're really good, they have office hours, they have a monthly call, 
Yes. So a lot of great, and also my Burlington colleagues, we love to help out with, with showing this. Speaking of Burlington, by the way, here's another thing that I want to show you. Um, how many in the chat took at least, say, three years of a foreign language, two or three years of a foreign language, but are willing to admit many years later they wouldn't feel comfortable traveling to a country where that language was spoken and trying to survive on the street. Anybody, anybody willing to say, I took two years, I took three years, anybody took three or four years, five years? Yes, and I don't feel, well, think about when you look at that reading passage on the left there, think if that were in Spanish or French or Latin, whatever. Think of, of what's going on there. And so, and now think about that again, we're even asking you to stretch in the answer, most likely. Does that mean I like it? Right? So so this, I hope this is giving you an idea, you know, with keeping the integrity of the test of what you should be doing in the classroom, okay? So speaking of which, Speaking of which, now I'm so glad you asked for the classroom. How many of you have access to Burlington in your program in some way, shape, or form? Does anybody in the chat, do you have? Yep. Or do you wish you did? Do you wish you had? Um, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. We love it. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love. Oh, fantastic. It's Fanapalooza. Love it. So just, so thank you. If, if your name is Jane Iguez. If your name is Pat Rickard, if your name's Linda Taylor, I could go on and on and on. I don't want to miss anybody because if you're if you're on the board, thank you to our wonderful, wonderful friends at Casas. We've had such a great uh, partnership now for so many, so many years. Love you all. And so, uh, and, and thank you to people like Marcel and Naomi and Corinne and Debbie Gilman and so many others who were, and all of my Burlington colleagues have their fingerprints on our Burlington core. So fortunately, when we were building Burlington core, the North Star, this, what we looked at is just what exactly what CASAS had to do for their test. We looked at the English language proficiency standards to, to build it. So these are our, our lesson plans, which we really, really uh, encourage folks to use. And if you need any training, by the way, for extra credit in the chat, where can I find in Burlington the lesson plans? Anybody want to put in? What part of Burlington English can I find the lesson plans? They're really fantastic. All right. Great. Great, 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 great. Yep. Yep. So it's in the in, in the teacher's own, in, in the course and lesson planner. We've got it all. And so the correlations. so if you're looking for correlations to the ELPSs, so we do a really great job of helping you at a glance. Nine out of 10 teachers out there are part-time hourly. So I really want to help them know exactly what to do. So the critical thinking skills. So just know if you're using Burlington English, we've got you covered. And then for Burlington Core, just very quickly, does anybody remember... At the beginning, we talked about this report. What was the uh, what was the uh, report saying, in a nutshell? What was changing things? Anybody remember if if you had to take a nugget away from that report? And I know that was a long time ago, and we only asked it for that was like over forty minutes ago, Robert. Yeah. Oh, look at that, but Lori. Oh, right. I, yes, yes. And you get a car and you get a car. I mean, it's hot, I mean, it's a hot wheels. It's a hot wheels. I mean, trust me on my paycheck. Yeah, it's a hot wheels. Yes, yes. So that's right. D digital. So don't you love, again, kudos to everybody and, and all of my colleagues who, you'll take a hot wheels. Yeah, sign up. So what I love is that it, once again, we use the ELPSs. Take a look at this passage that I just grabbed randomly from Burlington and look at what it talks about. I'm gonna explode it here. Check check this out. This is in Burlington. And this talks about uh, Hollywood movies show, you know, future or humans are powerless. The world is controlled by robots or in, in my home, Alexa. Um, 
the the this reflects a very real fear that many people have these days in the future robots are going to take away their jobs ai right isn't this a isn't this pretty pretty impressive the fact that we mm-hmm. started writing this back in 2017 for release in 2019 and for myself as a teacher look what i can do and again what i love about burlington english as you know if you use burlington english you've got the projectable lessons that are matched to what students are going to be doing on their own asynchronous. And so I can get, you know, great uh, uh, reteaching and, and buttressing the, the, the teaching. So I love this one that talks about, look at these higher order questions. Can we as a society prevent this from, from happening? By the way, if you're looking for more training on this, on how to use it and where to find these, my favorite word in every language, Laura, free. And if yeah. you have Burlington English, the training is free. BurlingtonEnglish.com slash contact. Yeah. So, That's a, what a coincidence, Robert, because the CASAS training is also free. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And just like we, uh, uh, that's why we're a marriage made in heaven. I tell that's you. That's right. So that's right. This is so. And look at look at things that we've got here that we point out for our teachers, right? Making inferences. We've got little, you know, little helpful tips, teaching tips throughout. I love that we really help. And in fact, you know, if you're going on to ABE, GD, high set, you're probably going to be using things such as, um, um, such as multi-select and you're going to be a more digital, you know, use of study materials as you progress through and for your credential area. So we're getting you ready, right? Right. It's already baked in there. So love that, that that's already part uh, of Burlington English. Okay. So what else is new? I'm afraid to ask. What else is new? And, and, and it, it's got artificial intelligence involved. This is so exciting. Oh, oh, I know what that is. Yeah, Acostas has a new essay test. So um, we're really happy to be able to provide this as a tool for um, helping students prepare for essay tests that they may need to take. And also just to improve their writing skills. So students write an essay in a response to a written prompt. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. It's auto-scored using AI. So the results come within seconds. And... CASAS conducted numerous validation studies to check the accuracy of the machine scoring compared to human scoring. Well, and we know that one of the worst things about being a teacher who provides essay instruction, it's correcting those tests. So this is a great, uh, great tool for teachers to be able to use so they don't have to correct those essays. And the best part is, is it'll give them a little diagnostic. So it'll provide them with a personal score report. For those of you, those using e-test, so this is the test that's available using e-test, and they'll give them a little score, and then a little diagnostic on how to become a better writer. So it may talk about what they need to work on being the main idea or organization. So this is especially helpful because I think teaching writing is can be complicated, and especially for teachers who may be emerging teachers. This helps them um, guide their instruction for their students. And by the way, if you're thinking about what holds students back, ESL learners from matriculating successfully onto ABE and high school equivalency, right? math is usually a big one, but essay writing is right behind there. So fortunately, Burlington English is also perfect for essay writing. And so if you're not familiar on where to find this, We'll put it in the chat, but we've got free training to show you that we've got fantastic writing prompts. And I love that education should be learned moving from the known to the unknown, right? And so if you, yeah, worksheets. Yes, thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah. So just know that we just do fantastic. We can help you get your your learners. And by the way, diversity and culture, you know, is really plugged into what we're talking about you know, on the tip of all of our tongues right now. So essay writing is something that we've got in Burlington English that can help you in so many, so many uh, ways. And again, lesson plans to help guide you through how to use these 
most effectively. So love this, love this, love this. Hey, and now you're even making all the test levels and everything simpler. Yes, that's right. You know, I, I, I'm sure when you were in the classroom, Robert, at the end of the term, and as you would reflect on how you taught that class and what you could do better next time, right? We're like, I'm going to get that present perfect right this semester. My students are really going to get it this year. So CASAS has done the same kind of reflection with our test series as we've redesigned our test series. So before, the life and work reading had four levels, A through D, and NRS levels one through six. And the life and work listening had three levels, A through C, NRS levels one through six. So we're streamlining and simplifying our tests so that all of the tests, they're going too fast. You've got to go back, Robert. Reading steps, listening steps all have five levels, A through E, and they cover NRS levels one through six. Yay. Yay. It's just so exciting. It's just so hard. It's just, <laughs> it's just like, I'm just going to keep, keep hitting oh, this. It's just this. exciting. No, no, no. All right. So here's our levels breakdown. We have NRS levels one through six. And then the CASAS test levels, you see that A covers levels one and two, B covers levels two and three, C covers three and four. So this new design means that the opportunity always exists for students to earn the MSG. So this, the benefits, oh yeah, here you go. You wanna highlight that? Yeah, thank you. So that's level A. Covering levels one through two, one and two. Did you want to add something, Robert? No, just that great for a lot of us who remember the pre-A days and 27, 28. And so it's- you've, Oh, you've right. Gotten, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you'll notice that the 27, 28 isn't there. It's because the level A begins at a lower level. And then just for everyone's awareness, if you're concerned about um, those- pre-literacy students or low literacy students, you can use the level A CASA steps uh, for as a consumable. So students could write directly in the booklet and then you would destroy the booklet if that makes it easier for your pre-literacy students. So the strengths of the new structure are there are fewer test questions. So 33 to 39 items. There's a higher accuracy because of the new design, the tests cover fewer performance levels, and lower incidence of inaccurate scoring. So that means less retesting, which will schools will really love, and your students will love it because it will save, save them some time. If you have administrative roles in any way, shape, or form, would you put yes in the chat? I'd love to see who has, uh, I'm a recovering administrator, so it's okay. You can admit yes, and, and Laura, same. Yes. Okay. So sometimes the devil's in the details, right? The devil's in the details. So this is little things. And again, hopefully your state system is on this. They've been alerted, but a lot of you still have maybe some paper and pencil rigid, you know, placement charts and what have you. So take a look at this. So this is the current life and work. And you see, there's those scoring ranges that we've been familiar with for so long. I could do them in my sleep, zero to 180, 181 to 190, you know. So just take a look at, uh, because the way the, the federal government, you know, required uh, reconfiguration of a lot of things, take a look at now those scoring ranges have changed for reading step, for steps and, and life and work. So you, I'm just doing a comparison there. You never quite know where you might have these scoring ranges. So just know that these scoring ranges have, and again, it might seem like a minor thing, but sometimes, again, you have placement or you have uh, supplemental databases that assign level gains based on scoring ranges. You never know. It's just, believe right. it or not, in my 33 years, a lot of stuff like this has been very important. And once again, I can't say it enough, this PowerPoint is going to be posted to the web in a few days, along with our entire archive. Yeah. Um, and if you're all set, uh, if you're using Burlington, we've got you all set. We've got you can connect with your local representative uh, to get your hands on the copy of the um, we can pop it in the chart, too. But you can reach out BurlingtonEnglish.com slash contact because we've got you all set up 
on the revised placement for reading and listening steps. So got that covered. Um, okay, here's the pay, the pay and the bills part. 